Hey you guys, let's go ahead and go over an example of how to do a one sample hypothesis testing with proportions. Okay, so first things first, uh, let's go ahead and read our scenario, let's look at our data, let's get it loaded in, and then let's answer our preliminary questions. All right, so first things, it says that Damien is interested in dental health in Casper. There recently was a report that 58% of people floss every night. Damien doesn't know if they are correct. He decided to send a poll to randomly selected people in Casper to determine if they floss every night. He wants to test an alpha level of 10%. He, uh, his collected data is shown below. All right, and then we have this note too. It says, note if there's insufficient information to appropriately complete the hypothesis test, first complete all preliminary questions. Then for the hypothesis test section, type or select NA for every question, then select the correct answer for the conclusion. Okay, so we have to remember that we, in order for us to do our hypothesis testing, we still must um, meet the requirements of our different testing. So sometimes there's going to be a minimum sample size. Later on, there'll be other requirements, but we have to have those re basic requirements need to be met in order for us to run our test. So in this one sample uh, hypothesis test for a proportion, uh, we are looking for a minimum number of observations. Okay, so here it says that Damien is really interested uh, in this health, and we see that we're given this hypothesized value, and we get a few other things in here too. But let's just go ahead and look at our data. So here we see flossing every night, it's either categorized as a yes or a no. So we're going to just copy this, and let's get it into our R commander. So data, import, and clipboard tabs, click OK, and we should get our data in here. All right, so we're just gonna leave that in there now that we've got our data in. We're gonna start asking our question. So what type of data are we dealing with? So when we look at this, are we dealing with numbers, are we dealing with categories, and we're dealing with categories. The answers to the questions are like yes or no. So we're gonna say that we are dealing with categorical data. Okay. So next it says, what distribution should we, be, should we be using? Now in our proportions testing, we actually have two options when we're doing one sample proportion. We could either use our kind of traditional Z test here where, where we take the hypothesized proportion and the null proportion and we set those guys uh, if they're equal to one another and we can use this guy or we can use the alternative method of this chi-squared method. A slightly different method of, of how to do it, um, but both of them are good answers. I'm actually going to go ahead and click on chi-squared, and I want to select chi-squared here. Um, but we could use z, and if we're using z here, we should select this z down below. Okay, I'm going to select chi-squared. So coming on down, and now asks who is our population of interest. All right, so we have got to go back up to our questions like who is Damien interested in talking about uh, in his uh, in his experiment? And he's interested in talking about these the dental health of people in Casper. So we would click everyone in Casper. Now it wouldn't be everyone in Wyoming because he didn't send his sample out to everyone in Wyoming or just to Damien's patients or to everybody in the world. It's everybody in Casper. Uh, the parameter of interest that we're interested in is a proportion, so we should probably look at the true proportion, true proportion, and are we interested in those who floss nightly or those who do not floss nightly? We could take it from either direction, but we want to know which way we want to go. And he's interested in the people who floss every night. So let's go to those, the true proportion who floss nightly. Now the question is, 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 our, is our sample size sufficiently large to do our analysis? All right, so in order to do this, we are going to start off right now with being a little conservative, and we are going to start off with remember that we need at least 15 yeses and 15 noes in our expected values in order to be able to run this analysis. Okay, so first things first, we need to figure out how big is our data set. So let's start off with that and we can go to our data, we can go to our um, basic statistics, we can do some descriptive statistics and just click on like our active data set. 
And we see that we have 62 yeses and 62 noes from what we saw. But what we need to know is what our sample size is. So we're just going to add those two together and we get 109. Now we need to expect to see at least um, 15 yeses and 15 noes. So that goes back to our pi naught is equal to 0 0.58. That was our hypothesized true proportion. And so we can see it over here in our values. Okay, and then we know that n is going to equal to b109. And we're going to do pi naught c, it's going to be, or the complement is going to be equal to 1 minus pi naught. And it gives us 42. So we need to have at least 15 expected yeses and 15 expected noes. So we're going to do n times pi naught, which gives us 63, and n times pi naught c, which gives us 45. So we do have sufficiently large, and we can click down here, and we can say that Yes, the sample is sufficiently large. There are at least 15 expected successes and 15 expected failures. Now, had we chosen no, that the sample is too small for unexpected 15 successes and 15 failures, we would then go down and follow this indication that we would put NA for every single question or answer, and then we'd select that there's insufficient data to use uh, our analysis tools, and we would then stop. And that's okay. Some of these are going to come out like that. But this one we're going to do that we do have a sufficiently large um, a sufficiently large sample to have an expected of 15 yeses and 15 noes. All right, so we're going to come down to our hypothesis test. And here we are making some statement about pi or about this true proportion. And the null hypothesis is that it's going to be equal to what our hypothesized proportion was, which was the 0.58. Now up here we need to know for our alternative is, is this going to be a greater than, less than, or a not equal symbol? And so we can come up here and we can say, so Damien doesn't know if they are correct. So there's no direction there. He's just wanted to see if this 0.58 is correct. So because of that, we are going to do a not equals to and 0.58. And let's go ahead and increase kind of the text size here. Okay, alpha. We know what alpha is. It was given to us at the beginning. It says test an alpha level of 10%. So we can put a 0 0.10 for alpha. All right, so our next step is that we need to collect some data and collect our test statistic. So we need to know what our sample proportion is, and we need to know what our sample size is, and we want to know either a z or a chi-squared statistic. The z would be one that we do by hand. Our commander will give us chi-squared automatically. So I tend to use chi-squared uh, just because it's a little simpler, uh, but both of them will give you the same p-value, or it will tell you how rare of a result do we have. All right, so first things first, we have a sample size and we know that it's 109. We already got that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this P. Now we could go into like our summary statistics and just get some proportions or we could run like a frequency table like that. But since we already know that we're able to do this test, let's go ahead and do it. Now, now that we're at the point where we are doing hypothesis testing, we are going to leave our basic statistics and we are going to come over here to this statistics tab. And we know that we are dealing with proportions because we know that we're dealing with um, with pi, this true proportion. So we're going to do a single sample proportions test. So the data we're going to use is this floss every night. And then we go to options. And now we need to set a few things in here. First things first, this needs to match our alternative hypothesis. So our alternative hypothesis said not equal to. And if you see this, this is common encoding, exclamation point and equal sign. That's the same thing as saying not equals to. So we now will want to say that our null hypothesis is 58%. And our confidence interval is going to be, or our confidence level is going to be 0.9. And I can go ahead and click OK. All right, so a couple things here that we need to be careful of. Uh, 
very first is we get this frequency count. This is very important because right now this is going to be testing the proportion of yeses. Had we had the noes first, it would have been testing the noes. And we have to figure out, okay, let's say, for example, we wanted the noes to be first and we wanted to test against the noes. We can do that, but we have to change what's called the factor level. How we do that is we can go to our uh, we can go to our basic statistics. Oh, let's go to data. Sorry, data. We can go to manage our variables and we can say reorder factor levels. And if we just click OK and it says, you know, it wants to make sure that do you really want to overwrite this? And we can say yes. So right now it has the factor level of yes as one and no as two. And when it does the testing, it's always going to do the test against the factor level one. So we could change our factor levels here. How our commander decides to do the factor levels is that it just puts it in alphabetical order. So it goes numbers first and then letters. So here it had that one and the two, uh, so that, that why I put yes as one and no as two. But if we, those one and the twos weren't there on the yeses and the noes, the noes would be one and the yeses would be two simply because of alphabetical order. So that's how you change it. You'd just flip, you'd literally just type in a two, type in a one, um, but I actually want these left alone and I'm just going to go ahead and click, click click cancel. Okay, so now we need to know what our P. So P is our sample proportion and the sample proportion is at this very bottom. Look, sample estimates and we can just go ahead and copy this guy and paste it in. Remember, I'm looking for answers carried out to accurate to four decimal places, but if you have more, just go ahead and toss them in. Okay, right, so now we have the chi-squared or the z. Both of them are correct, uh, but I am actually going to take it just from the chi-squared because chi-squared is already given. And then we have this p-value, and we can just copy and paste our p-value in. And remember, once again, the p-value says, it's like, what's the probability that we would see a result like this given that the null hypothesis is true? And so... What it says is we'd say see a result this strange or stranger like 81% of the time. So that's not a very rare occurrence. It's actually a very common occurrence. So this p-value, we know that this p-value is greater than alpha. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and calculate the confidence interval. Now, you could go through and calculate it by hand, or our commander has actually already done it for you. If you take a look at the output, we can see that for our 90% confidence interval, it's already done a two-tailed interval. Why did it do a two-tailed interval? Well, if we go back and we look at our alternative hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis tells us that we are doing a two-tailed test. Had we been doing a greater than or equal or greater than or less than symbol, then we would have been doing a one-tailed test. But because back in the original definition, there wasn't a direction, that is why we're doing a two-tailed test. Okay, so coming back down here, the confidence interval, we can just go ahead and put that in here, paste it, and I'm going to copy this guy, and I'm going to paste it. Okay, so my decision is because my p-value is greater than alpha, I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. I haven't proved the null hypothesis or any of these other things. All I have said is that I haven't collected enough data in order to reject the null hypothesis. So I'm gonna say fail to reject the null. So in the conclusions, we have kind of four options here. So one was if there's insufficient data, we could use our analysis tools and we'd just stop. Or uh, we have a couple of other ones. We could say that we collected sufficient evidence using the chi-squared method to say that they were different. Or I could say that we collected sufficient evidence using the Z method. And, or I could say that we collected insufficient evidence. Okay, so I'm going to use this chi-squared method, collected insufficient evidence at this chi-squared. And this one is the degrees of freedom that it gives us here. This is the sample size that we have. So this is 109. And we gave it the chi-squared value. We gave it p-value and the alpha level to reject the claim that the true proportion of loss nightly of everyone in Casper is equal to 0.58. We didn't have enough evidence to reject it, so we can just go ahead and click here. And let's just take a second to see how we did. 
And we go back through and we see that, hey, we did great. We went through and we were able to identify what we were supposed to do and how to get our answers. So one thing that I want to point out is that you might not have the exact same example that this one has. And the reason is, is because this guide is set up to be a way to practice many different um, configurations. This, if you were to redo this one, uh, it might pop up to be one where instead of saying that we didn't have a direction, that he doesn't know if they are correct, maybe it's one tailed. Let me show you what I mean. So after you submit this and it's graded, you can come back to it for ungraded practice. And I am going to regenerate this real quick. And now, check this out. It says Damien is really interested. He thinks that there's a report that 9% of people floss every night. And now Damien thinks this proportion is too high. Okay, so this has completely changed our setup. And we have new data. And we can kind of go through and look and try to do this again with now we're doing a one tailed test. So I'm actually going to leave that, that to you to kind of practice some of these other directions that, that you can use, uh, but also be sure to check to make sure, do you have even enough data to go? If you don't, putting NA all the way down is exactly what I want to do. Being able to recognize when you're not supposed to do an analysis is a good technique as well. So with that, that is our guide for one sample hypothesis testing for proportions.